Hello, Degrassi readers, and welcome to Bruce Mackey's Library. We're here with our guest librarian, Degrassi Kid. It's me. Hi, readers. I'm excited to be here. Yes, we're excited to interview about the Degrassi Kid book clubs. Woohoo! I'm excited. And our very first question is actually from Amber, who <gasps> went to both Degrassi book clubs. We love Amber. Thank you for asking me a question, Amber. I'm happy to hear from you. She wants to know, do you remember how it felt when you were first called Degrassi Kid? Oh, good question. I do. So actually, I came up with it myself. I started the username on Tumblr back in the day, like 2011 or something like that. And then it was just something that I continued to use through social media. But I remember one of the most validating experiences of my life was the first time that I met Linda Schuyler. And she kept referring to me as Degrassi Kid. And Annie Clark kept referring to me as Degrassi Kid. And Ian Christensen, who was Degrassi's publicist, kept screwing up and calling me Degrassi Girl. And I was like, don't worry, I'll change it. I can change it. It's okay. (laughs) I'm not too far deep yet. But I know that every time I hear from the cast and they call me Degrassi Kid, it makes me feel so validated. And I think it is so cool now that people online call me Degrassi Kid. It's 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 interesting that it went from just being like a little internet handle to now something that people call me. And I really, really love it. I do not love being called DK, though. I do not love that. Degrassi Kid or Jocelyn. <laughs> I remember you said that once. You're like, I don't like DK. It sounds like I don't know. Like, don't know. Yeah. Or like Donkey Kong. Like, I don't know. It just doesn't it doesn't feel like it connects to me when even when people say DK, I don't realize that they're talking to me. And I'm like, oh, yeah. What? Hi. (laughs) That's wild. I've never known you before Degrassi Kid. You've always been Degrassi Kid to me. I've been Degrassi Kid, I think, since I was like 16 or 17. Like, it's this has just been who I am. And I love it. I wouldn't have it any other way. I'm so glad that that's the username I chose. I almost chose the username Degrassi Lesbian because the show helped me come out when I was younger. Um, But I'm so much happier to have the name Degrassi Kid follow me around. And then it just like worked out perfect to be a content creator and doing things that are branded. I mean, Degrassi Kid, we're all Degrassi Kids. We all love the show. Even if you're on the show, you're a Degrassi Kid. So it kind of works out perfect. I had no idea I was setting myself up for so much success with my Tumblr username back in the day. It's wild how things can just follow you throughout years and years. Yeah, I'm very lucky that it worked out. Okay, so that's perfect because the next part of that was, if so, what were your thoughts? Your thoughts are you love it. I love it. I think I'm really happy that my younger self chose something that's so normal, first of all, because I i mean, I've definitely had other non-Degrassi usernames that I would not want to follow me around. Um, and it just worked out perfect for the podcast. When I was thinking about the podcast, you know, the Degrassi Kid podcast, not only is that me, but that's the listeners for all Degrassi Kids. The guests I have are all Degrassi Kids. So it worked out like literally perfect. I'm so thankful to younger me for being normal about it. <laughs> it's hard to be normal sometimes for sure. Mm-hmm. And Amber's next question was, what is your favorite Degrassi book? I think you answered it on your episode that I listened to today. That is a good question. She added in, this includes books that were written from someone that was on the show, as well as books written for the show. Okay, Um, that's That's a really good question. That adds a big twist. So I will kind of answer this in two parts. One of my favorite character books is the Snake book, because I love the fact that we get such an introspection on Snake, not only dealing with his brother's sexuality, but questioning his own sexuality. And more so than even just like, like in the show, Snake is like, hey, could I be gay too kind of thing. But in the book, we really get the idea of how he really thinks that above the just genetics. But of course, my all time favorite Degrassi book has to be the mother of, of all Degrassi. I mean, I'm in it. I worked on the publicity team for it, of course that one has the spot in my heart as the number one favorite book and it's the book I've probably read the most I think I've read it like four or five times now and you even have a tattoo about that book right yes and I have a tattoo I have I got a uh every time I travel I try to get a tattoo to remember uh the cool memories attached and I got a tattoo that says Linda writes a memoir which is kind of a reference to the kids of Degrassi Street episode titles you know Rachel runs for office Lisa makes the headlines um so I got that as a memory of, hey, I uh, worked on this book. And that was before I even knew I was in the book. So that was just me working on the publicity team. I got this tattoo. So then whenever Linda showed me, she opened up the book. She was like, hey, I want to show you something. And she showed me, she read me the paragraph with my name in it. And I said, oh, well, I have to show you something too. I have a tattoo with your name in it. Uh, and she told, told me that I was crazy, but she loved it. <laughs> so you get a tattoo every time you travel. Did you get one for the Degrassi trivia? 
I haven't yet. I know that sometime in the future, I will prob that will probably be one of the next tattoos I get is these next uh, series of trips that I got to go on for Degrassi. Now the problem is, is I'm going to Toronto too much. I got to slow down so I can get these tattoos. <laughs> I can't wait to see them. Oh my gosh. I haven't gotten a tattoo yet, but that's pretty inspirational right there. If you were to get one, uh, do you know what you would get? Oh, heck yeah. I'm getting the quest for the best logo. And underneath it, I'm getting the best that I can be. And I, I want to get love done that. by Craig Driscoll. Aww. I want to go see him and get that done. That would be perfect. I know my dreams are to go back and visit Craig and get more Degrassi tattoos. That's the dream. Even better to get it from a Degrassi actor. Well, it's got to be by him. He was in the quest for the best episode. He gave his jacket. And then you could get him to like tattoo a little signature at the bottom. It'd be so cute. Oh, that would be so awesome. That would be so. Also, what I really love is I think it's realistic that Rick would grow up to be a tattoo artist. So especially with all those designs on his jacket and stuff, I think that would be so linear for him. Yeah, he drew the designs himself. He was saying on your podcast episode. Yeah. And yeah. got that little painting behind you that I've got a bookmark of. Yeah. Yes. I know. So nice of him to do that for us. He's the coolest. I sent him stickers one time. <gasps> I love that. Yeah. He put his address out on TikTok for uh, P.O. Box. And I was like, heck yeah, I'm sending him stickers. Why the heck not? Yeah, I love that. So all of your other questions are from me. I'm so sorry to say. No, I love it. I'm here to I'm here to hear from you. So you made the Discord literally mm-hmm. just to have a book club. I'm curious, yeah. how long did you sit on the idea of let's make a Discord? And why did you choose Discord? Great question. So... For, for In terms of the book club itself, I had been planning the book club for a while. I knew that after I had done this work with Linda that I wanted to host a book club in some way. So that was something that I had been sitting on. I think we'd started it in May, perhaps. And yes. uh, okay, we started it in May. And I knew since like the previous November that I was going to do the book club. But I was the most comfortable with Zoom as a platform. So originally it was going to be on Zoom and it was just going to be meetings. It wasn't going to have this like chat option with it. And I had been a part of, I'm subscribed to other Patreon platforms and they use Zoom as their main meeting platform. So I thought, okay, this is how everybody does it. Everybody does it on Zoom. But then for like, oh my God, I think like two years or something, I had always had people say, hey, you should start a Discord. And my only experience with Discord at the time was when I was in film school, there was another student who had started a Discord so we could like talk about our homework and our assignments and stuff. And I had no interest at all in joining this Discord. I did not want to talk about homework and assignments with my classmates. It was all over. Our class was all done online. So I didn't know any of them. They're all strangers. And I remember he just like hounded and hounded and hounded for me to join this Discord. So finally I did. And it was just like, so boring it was like a channel where you just talked about homework and I was like this discord seems really dumb I'm gonna be so honest with you but I had no idea at the time the potential that discord could have as an actual community space with people who are actually interested in being a part of that community I was not interested in being on this discord so I remember I had met some uh, Degrassi fans who were like hey you should host it on discord they have the option to do meetings you can do like chats and stuff like that and it just sounded like hey, this is an option where if you can't come to the weekly meetings, there's still a way to check in. You can still, uh, there's still a Mother of All Degrassi chat that we can have. This is where I can post all the readings. So it's all in one place if you're not on Patreon instead of having Patreon and then Zoom as two separate spaces. Um, So honestly, it was somewhere within 24 to 48 hours before I announced announced the book club, I was like, okay, I'm going to start a Discord for it. And we're going to go with Discord. Knowing that if I needed to switch it to Zoom, we could switch it to Zoom. And also thinking that after the book club was over, the Discord would be over. Like it was just going to be used for the space. I had no idea that it would come to what it is today. And now we're about to host our second book club. That was such a long-winded answer. Third book club. (laughs) Third book club. Third book club. Crazy. That is wild because I remember we were on a different Discord um, with the Trail Mix podcast and we did the Schools Out watch party. Oh my God, that was so much fun too. That was so much fun. And that was my, that was really my first real introduction to Discord. If I hadn't have had that experience, we probably wouldn't have ended up doing it on Discord because I couldn't imagine what it was like. And that was just a fun way. A bunch of fans showed up to watch the show. I saw that they had chat channels on their side. So they really were the people who introduced me to what Discord was meant to be used for as a community. And sadly, that Discord's like not very active anymore. I'm still a member of it and I haven't seen a post in forever. 
Yes, I think they both decided to stop making their podcast because they felt their friend time was being spent focusing on the podcast and not focusing on their friendship because they're uh, long distance friends now. They used to live together yes. and then they moved to different parts of the world. So that's what I understand is they still love Degrassi. They still love the community, but felt like all their time was being spent working on a podcast. I hope I'm not speaking on their behalf, but that's what I'm pretty sure their last Patreon post said. Okay, I'm not a member of their Patreon, but that makes sense. I Yeah could never afford you and them <laughs> so I, chose I know you. thank you for choosing me i i'm always impressed whenever someone else has a co-host for their podcast like i love all of my friends i don't think i could sit down every single week and host a podcast with someone that's why i like doing like i love coming on other people's podcasts and talking to them or having people as guests sporadically on mine i love the way that evie's doing it by having guests every so often like or, or watching with her but i would struggle with me and my best friend sitting down talking every single week about the same topic i don't i don't think i could do it <laughs> no i don't think i could either i i have done most of my episodes alone and while that is tough mm-hmm. i think having a guest every single week would be way tougher i don't know how evie finds a guest for every episode i know it's so i'm always so blown away by other people podcast I love that I get to work on my own pace I love that I have complete creative control I don't have to fight with anyone else um it's really and then you know, there's also not a lopsided of like this person does more than this person does it's just kind of like it's it's me and I reach out for help when I need it and I have you and Evie and all my friends to help and it's great that's exactly how I feel yes mm-hmm. that is wild how quickly you decide to change from zoom to discord and I'm happy you did because I know nothing about zoom Thank God I did. I I don't even know that much about Zoom. I just knew it more than Discord. But now I'm like, I am so grateful that that happened because it spiraled into so many things. And I know you recently were rewatching the first early um, clips of us in our book club. And yes. even seeing those, it looked so empty and bare. Like there was hardly any channels. We didn't have our little emoji set up. Um, and back then there was, I think now we have like 350 members or something like that. Um, and back then there was maybe like 40. Yeah, yeah, that's incredible. Back then there was not that many. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, watching the first ever book club was so wild. I didn't even know we were being recorded. And I'm like, man, I look cringy. My phone keeps crashing. I didn't oh. know that I was like, supposed to have an app on my laptop for discord instead of Mm. using discord website on my laptop for the chat option and then the app on my phone for my video option which kept crashing i don't worry i remember those days as well i had no idea how discord worked i i I, i'm amazed that now i actually can navigate things because back then i needed my moderators like that i did not know how to do anything at all on that website so they really the original crew really set everything up and now now that we have new moderators i'm often the one who will teach them or or nicholas or or ev or something like that um but now i feel so much better because i'm like i actually know what i'm doing now in the beginning i had i had, I had no hope no hope at all <laughs> it's wild so i'm curious you talked about you did your promo tour and you got a tattoo for it mm-hmm. what did you learn on that promo tour that you decided to take into the book club with you oh I learned a lot of kind of like Linda's thinking about things because Linda had done a lot of interviews about Degrassi but they were always pretty much in the same vein it was we I used to be a teacher and I taught eighth grade uh this is how the abortion episode changed over the years or or I worked with Drake on Degrassi she was always asked about the same topics over and over again especially when you're talking about a show like Degrassi that has a 40-year history you're really always going to look at the highlights so it was really interesting both reading the book and getting to talk to Linda about the book in hearing how much of her opinion and her view of the world really influenced Degrassi. Like I thought the story um, from one of her first chapters about making the documentary between two worlds and how she recognized that like, Hey, I was bullied in school for being different. And I was a white kid. How are these kids facing those differences? Um, And her students who faced that, that was really empowering for me and kind of pieced a couple puzzles together for me of things like, One of the decisions she made around Degrassi Talks was that, yes, they could air this wherever they wanted to in the world, but it could not be edited. It could only be edited if they wanted to change the statistics to their own locations, because all the statistics were Canadian statistics. Um, So if someone in America wanted to air it, they could, but they'd have to, they could only change the U.S. statistics. And I realize that that's partially influenced from her experience having her first documentary aired out of context and making one of her POC students or her Black students look like a victim when he was just sharing his own life story. So it was interesting. 
interesting to learn from her all the little pieces that I had missed over the years. And that's what made me excited to talk about the book club because I had such a vast knowledge of Degrassi. I had just spent so much time with Linda talking about her book that it was amazing to fill in those gaps for everybody who loves this show just as much as you and I do. Yes, I remember that was one of your very first questions in that book club. You asked, has anybody else felt like they lived in between two worlds? And a lot of us had. I definitely had. Yeah, especially as I find the people who are in my community, a lot of them are queer people. And that's something that you really go through, especially when the time that we were growing up, you really have to make a decision about when you're going to be openly and proudly yourself and when you have to kind of keep that quieted down into yourself. So it was very interesting to talk to people. And I feel like those kind of questions really create a fun space to talk about the books and do things that are do things that are different. Did you ever regret starting with such a big book with like tons of watch parties Instead of like starting with one of the smaller books where the questions might be a little bit easier and not so much to handle. That is a really good question. So I think a normal, rational person would start it with a smaller book. Um, I have a problem where I love to go. I love to do things bigger than anybody else. Like I want to start with the biggest book. I I remember thinking I'm going to host a 12 week book club where we're going to watch the episodes of Degrassi and then we're going to end it in an interview with Linda Schuyler. And that at the time. I mean, that was huge to try to think that I could come up with something like that. So I feel Yes, I probably should have started with a smaller book, but I'm just so ambitious and I want to do the best that I can that it felt right after coming off the heels of that publicity tour to start with Linda Schuyler's book. And then now I feel so ready for every future book club because I know all of the hiccups. I went through all of the hardships. I know what goes right. I know what goes wrong. Um, I know what's engaging to our audience. and I know what's not. So I feel glad that I knocked the big book out of the way because now everything else will be. It's so easy compared to doing a 12-week book club about Linda Schuyler's book and having her come on. Like that was the hardest thing I've ever done. So very happy that I started with that book. I mean, yeah, I remember I was messaging you as soon as I found the Degrassi books, which you talked mm-hmm. about in one of your podcasts, that's how I found out Degrassi had books. I started messaging you and I was like, I'm reading these books and I want to do a book club. I want to do a book club. And you're like, one of these days, one of these yeah. days, I'm like when, when, it's when, coming. and then we finally did it. And I was like, oh my gosh, I downloaded Discord the second I saw it. I'm like, yes, yes. I love that. I'm and crazy now that you're now at this point of running your own podcast. But I think the other part about starting with The Mother of Val Degrassi is there's a lot more interest in The Mother of Val Degrassi. It was like a brand new book at the time where I think getting people's attention for, hey, we're going to read this book that's like 30 years old. Do you want to come talk about it? Especially when so many fans are from all over the generations of the show. Like we have some people in the Discord who love our Discord and come to everything, but couldn't come to the Snake event because they didn't know anything about that, that period of the show or anything so I think starting with the mother of all Degrassi really is what got us such a huge uh in- investment from people and I think it is absolutely nuts that we started there and then now you are hosting the Degrassi book podcast like how cool is that for you honestly one of the best times of my life every time I sit down and I'm researching a book I'm like can't believe I'm doing this can't believe my favorite show has books that I'm just so invested in and they're so interesting to me so incredible and it's led to crazy opportunities like you spoke to linda you got to speak to linda about books and she said she wants to tell wild brain to get them pumping out you got to connect with tom melissa's to do a podcast together like it's so crazy that just listening to a podcast where you heard that there was degrassi books has led to you know like a a full year of being fully in this community it's amazing i mean there was a point where i almost didn't choose your podcast to listen to i literally just finished a degrassi rewatch podcast and i was like I need more Degrassi and I'm walking my dog. I need a Degrassi podcast so I can, you know, relive the show while walking my dog. I just searched Degrassi and I saw the Degrassi kid and I'm like, huh, it's not a rewatch podcast. All the other ones are rewatch podcasts. What's this about? I love that. And then you found me. I do love Degrassi Rewatch podcast because I love hearing other people's perspectives. But if you asked me, if you said, Jocelyn, sit down and talk about 512 episodes of Degrassi from start to finish, I could never, I could not. And the way that, which is why I'm like so impressed when people do it, but the way that my brain works is I just love a good fact, you know, like it's really fun to discuss the show, especially when we have these little discord calls that we do. But I love talking about like why the episode was made, how the actors felt about it, what Linda's intention was. That's where my love for Degrassi comes from. So it felt right. It never even crossed my mind to do a rewatch podcast because that just is not who I am when it comes to Degrassi. 
honestly, that's really cool because I feel like you would have been the first one with like Kids of Degrassi Street rewatch episodes. Yes. Oh, I would have started from the beginning. I would have probably started with a history of episode leading up into how they got the Kids of Degrassi Street made and then go through all of the episodes one by one. Yeah, you're the first one I found that ever talked about Kids of Degrassi Street. I had never even heard of it before. I know that always shocks me. It's the blueprint. It's where Degrassi got its start. I love Degrassi. From I, I, there's some eras like season thirteen and fourteen of the Next Gen aren't my favorite, but it's still a, it's still a part of part of my love for the show. So kids of Degrassi Street to Next Class. That's uh my love for the show. All right there. It is wild that it started with a book turned into an episode, a whole franchise. Yeah, really, it started with a book and ended with a book because the last real Degrassi thing that's come out is Linda's Linda's uh, memoir. So started with a book and ended with a book. What's the or next even we'll have to started say. with a librarian. You never know. <gasps> exactly. I love it. Very, very cute. Yeah, I was talking to Tom yesterday and I'm like, had you ever heard of Bruce Mackey before? And he's like, no. And I'm like, wait, Linda doesn't just talk about him nonstop. <laughs> like, you know? Right. I think it's because we're obsessed with Bruce Mackey. Nobody yeah. knows who he is. <laughs> I love him so much, but yeah, he's definitely a part of the deep lore of Degrassi. I had never even heard of him until I found your podcast episode about him. And I was like, wait, what? And now he's like my hero. Oh, I know. I know. If I could meet one person from Degrassi, it would be Bruce Mackey. I know that could never happen. But one of my favorite memories ever in my life will be standing outside of his house with Linda and telling her my coming out story and having her. I wish it could have been a bigger part of the clip, the web series we did. They were only 90 seconds each. But we had a very good heart to heart about uh, And Annie was there. It was incredible. Yeah, I really wish those were longer. I want to I want to go inside his house and see every single room and just I want him to be there Degrassi of the Dead style, you know? I know, right? It would be incredible. I wish. You saw a lot of us meet for the very first time on that Discord. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, what was it like to see the community come together and watch all of us meeting? It was beautiful. It it was really impactful for me because I constantly get messages from people that say, oh my God, I've never met someone else who loves this show, who loves the show as much as I do, and who has seen all of these episodes. It's so amazing to watch your content. And I'm like, I that's great but I get like a hundred messages that are like that so how incredible would it be if all 100 of you got together and got to meet each other and what was so incredible is right away there was friendships that were made like Evie is my like best friend in the whole wide world now because of this discord there's so many people who have met up in real life because of it some of us have traveled together. It's incredible. Some of us have like worked on these podcasts together and these projects together. It really warms my heart to know that the feeling that I was getting of having so many people reach out to me and share this love for a show is now being shared by such a huge group of people. And now that we're so far into the Discord, we've been doing it for a full year now. I can't believe that we didn't have this before. I'm like, what did I even do with my time? Who did I even talk to? Like, this is such my main method of communication now. It's the first thing I check in the morning when I wake up. I'm so excited to see everybody's posts. I love our after school clubs with all of our leaders. It feels crazy that this wasn't just always a part of something that we were doing online. That's exactly how I feel. The first thing I do in the morning, you know, you see my little stickers that I post saying good morning. That's the first thing I do. I turn off my alarm. I go straight to my laptop post a little sticker, turn off my podcast, and then go walk my dog. I love that. Yeah, it's like up there with I Discord, then I'll check Instagram, then I'll check my messages. Like, it's just one of my social medias that I check. And I'm not even in any other discords the only other discords that i'm really in are if i want to like use their emojis like i'm in a sims discord but i've never read it before i just like to use their little sims emoji so it's really the the main social media platform that i use it's crazy yeah i think i've met like thousands and thousands of friends it feels like but it's really not there's yeah. the best people yeah and there's always someone around and i love i love the one thing that i wish we would still do uh, is we used to just like hop into the discord calls and just hang out that was one of my favorite things and I think that's because we didn't have so much going on at the time we literally just had a book club and then it was like okay we have nothing else going on until next book club do you just want to hang out so I'm hoping that we can push for those kind of things to start happening and maybe one of the things I even have to do is just like schedule a random call and then everybody will show up and we'll just hang out maybe we got to do it that way but that's what I miss it's just the casual like let's just hang out and talk to each other we did one of those um The week after our last My So-Called Life, I was like, I miss everybody. I can't believe we're done with the show. Can we just talk? Yeah. 
That's incredible. I love that. That month was so fun. April was one of the best months. That's the hard part about having such a big month is there's so much going on. And then afterwards, you even when there's still events happening, you're like, are we going to talk to each other? It's like, we are. We are. <laughs> we talk every single day. It's just not always video calls. <laughs> Yes, exactly. And I do love, oh my gosh, we experimented with um, a chat event and I felt like it was like, it was so fun and we got new people to join in. So it's really nice to experiment with new things and try new things. It's been going really well on the Discord. The chat events are so much fun, but they're, everyone's typing so fast. It's so hard <laughs> to keep up with. I'm just like, oh my God, I can't keep up. I can't keep I up. I know. If you look away for one minute, it's like an entire three conversations have gone by, but it's so fun. That's I love what it. happened um, when we were hosting the FOMO trivia. I was supposed to be leading a question. I stepped away from my phone for 10 seconds to grab tiramisu Oreo thins, left my phone on the couch, and Nick's <laughs> messaging me, are you okay? And I'm like, are you yeah. all right? <laughs> That's so funny. I thought that was so cute. I actually told the producers of the documentary that you guys hosted your own FOMO trivia night and they thought that was the cutest thing ever. So that was very fun to give you guys a little shout out. It was so much fun. I came up with questions, some of them, of course, about the books, some of them about oh, yeah. kids of Degrassi Street. And it was so much fun that no one knew any of the kids of Degrassi Street answers. <laughs> Nobody knew the book answers except for one. Nick was like, oh, yeah, the cover of Catherine Finds Her Balance is light blue. And I'm like, yeah, it is. You're right. Oh my God. Go Nicholas. I love that. I know I, I, so I was in the documentary because I hosted trivia and one of my goals is that after the documentary comes out, I want to host the same trivia question that I hosted at the bar. So it'll be a bit of a FOMO trivia. It probably won't be for like another freaking year or something, but I'm very excited to do uh, the trivia that was in the, the, the Degrassi event because I planned the whole thing. So I have the whole event in my hands. So I'm very, very excited to do that. And I really want to do the questions that you wrote that got left out. That would be so much fun. Yes, too. I have all of those. I have the whole thing. We'll play it together. I love the trivia night so much. I know it was so cool to do it in real life. Like, and it was, I think having all that practice online and also it had worked out perfect. Cause I was like for the uh, anniversary, I wanted to do it bar style online where all you guys went into your little groups and stuff and that was a perfect practice before the real life event it was so so cool we even had someone fly out from los angeles just to come play trivia like that was the main reason that they were flying out it was crazy yeah i'm following her now she's like brie sig or something on instagram brie s rig so so cool i was shocked so yeah and then it worked out that well she came alone so and evie didn't have a team as well because everyone else came with other people so they partnered up together and another guy named kyle and we all went out for drinks after and did our own extended trivia night later so that was very very cool i was like i can't believe you flew all the way for this it was amazing i wish i could have experienced that in person but team dadich my team we won <laughs> on, on the discord i love that i know that was such a fun night go team dad that was so much fun we had so much fun coming up with the name we were like man i can't think of one i can't think of one and nixon was like well Dad itch. And I'm like, yo, yeah, oh. itchy dad. No, dad itch. <laughs> dad itch. I love that. I know. I think that may be the style that we do it in going forward is doing teams because it was so much fun to host it and so much more interactive and so much less technology glitches because Kahoot always yeah. gives me a problem. So that was nice that there was no uh, issues like that. I think that definitely might be the way we do it going forward. I mean, I definitely had fun learning how to work Kahoot and using your account to do it. And I definitely, I look back on your Kahoot account too come up with the FOMO trivia questions a little bit. I love that. Oh my gosh. But yeah, Kahoot's always crashing. I don't know how to make it work. I know. It's always giving me problems. So the next one, I'm curious, what is it like to prep for the book club? What's it like for you coming up with all of these questions and really fun events? I love that. So that's a really good question. Uh, basically what it means is mostly me reading the book in advance. That's the, the biggest one is making sure that I'm ahead of everyone else. And whenever I'm going through it, I kind of just think like, I know I'm reading it in pre preparation of hosting a book club. So I kind of just keep my eye out of what's something that kind of prompts my way of thinking. Like, is there something that's written in the book that I would be curious do people prefer a certain thing about it or would they change it if they could? Or what was their, their takeaway? Specifically, when I was reading the Snake book, there's a scene where Snake becomes aroused and I was kind of shocked to read that scene. So I know that was something that I was curious to hear everybody else's thoughts of, hey, how did you think about the scene? Do you think it could have been on TV and that kind of stuff? But basically, the main thing is reading the book in advance and then thinking, what do I think would be interesting to talk about? And what's a little bit different about this upcoming book club that we're doing is instead of just thinking of questions questions and answers for us to do. The amazing thing is that Stefan references a few episodes of Degrassi so we can add some more watch parties to it. And he's really more 
other than Degrassi, he's into music. So I've been coming up with new ways, of course, with your help and identifying all those songs, uh, new ways to make it a little bit more exciting than just a question and answer kind of book club. But that's basically how I go into preparing them. It takes a lot of work, but it's really fun. Yeah. I've listened to the audiobook, of course, about five or six times, even before I knew we were doing a book club or I think even like right after I finished The Mother of All Degrassi, I was like, oh my gosh, there's more memoirs. There's Stephen Stones. I got to check it out. Found the audiobook on the library app Hoopla, free with your library card. And I'm like, oh my gosh, how much fun I can have with a library card. He records his own audiobook. I love that. There's like clips of songs in there. So like, I was so pumped when you're like, oh, can you help me with this? Can you help me research? And I'm like, yeah, heck yeah. Yeah. I know it's going to be so fun. And he, yeah, he's like done a podcast about it. And what was really amazing is that since I knew already, like I've already done the Linda one, uh, I already knew what we were going to keep from it, what we're going to get rid of from it. But I knew I had to ask Steven like, Hey, would you be fine doing a Q and a at the end? Um, So that was fun because whenever I announced the Linda book club, I didn't necessarily have it fully confirmed that Linda was going to come on yet. I knew that she was open to doing it, but I'd never done it before. So I wanted to like do the book club and then announce that she was coming on but this time I know how it's going to go so and it's also a lot shorter so we're going to be reading um more of the book and having less of a book club because I think 12 weeks was maybe just a little bit too long um so I think it'll be nice and succinct this time I think six weeks is is good and then and then a follow-up with Stephen Stone which is crazy so half of the length of how long it's going to be that's wild because you know me I'll do Mm -hmm. like a five-month book club with you I don't even care Exactly. And and that's the thing is one thing I always have to be conscious of is whenever I did the Mother of All Degrassi book club, it was amazing. But if you weren't participating in the book club and you were on Patreon or you were subscribed to any of my other content, you weren't getting anything that wasn't book club related. So if you weren't in the book club, uh, I lost some subscribers because of that, because they weren't necessarily waiting around for the 12 weeks, right? Which is totally valid. I mean, if you're not interested in the content or if you can't come to the book clubs or you couldn't get the book or you just can't make time to read it, it makes total sense. So what I'm trying to do or this book club is trying to be more conscious of I'm going to make my book club content, but I'm going to also make sure that I'm continuing on with my other projects at the same time. So that's why it's definitely a lot more shorter and this time I'll be asking for a lot more help from the community so that's why I asked you for the help with the music I also at some point I'm going to be asking if you'll be open to hosting some reading sessions for us on the on the book club um, but basically I'm making it a lot more of a community event instead of just me doing everything and then saying hey we're, we're here for it I know you guys love doing projects and love celebrating Degrassi and using your own creativity so it'll be a lot more of a collaborative book club this time which is exciting I do love that and you know I'm up for hosting reading <laughs> sessions in our little study hall Hey there, it's Editing Sierra here. So what I'm noticing as I'm editing is I didn't explain what study hall is because of course I'm talking to Jocelyn and of course they know what it is. But if you aren't on our Discord, then you just don't know most likely that study hall is a muted channel. So Discord mutes you automatically in this channel. So your microphone won't work, but if you choose to have your camera on, we'll see you and there's a chat and you can chat along and the lo-fi music will play so we can watch each other work on projects or in the case of a book club, read the books and just have accountability and fun. Now back to the recording. I did it for all Mm -hmm. of the snake ones and oh my gosh, so much fun. There were times when I was editing the podcast instead of reading too. Yeah, that's the fun thing is I love the study hall group because it's just like body doubling. Like you just like, I know I work so well because there's a whole bunch of people working. It's a little bit of accountability. Whatever you're working on. I was also never reading the book because I had already read the book in in advance before everyone else. So uh, yeah, and I was actually just talking to the moderators about what day it's best to do that. So soon I'll be hitting you up and asking you to help uh, host some weekly book readings with us, which will be so fun. And you already know my answer. Heck yeah. Hell yeah. I love it. I'm excited. Yeah. um, I sound so weird saying heck instead of hell. (laughs) Hell yeah. Oh my gosh. Earlier, you said this will be the second book club, but it'll actually be the third. I'm curious. Maybe that was because our Snake Book Club was a Patreon exclusive. Why did you make it Patreon exclusive? That's a good question. So when it comes to these types of book clubs, everything that we do for it is something that I take on independently. So when it comes to like, I made bookmarks for it. I had planned the whole book club myself. That is something that unless someone is sponsoring it, then I need the help financially to do those types of things. But with 
this book club, what I had done is I had done a fundraiser kind of event. So I had kind of flash sale things where you get like a Degrassi Junior High theme pack and that kind of thing. So those, I used those donations to get the bookmarks and to get the mailing stuff out to Stephen and get him to sign them back. So this is something that I wanted it to be accessible to everyone. So I chose kind of a different method of fundraising for it. So that's why this one is going to be public because I know that this one is going to have a lot more interest than a regular Degrassi book would. So I knew that this would be a really fun way to do something like that. And the Degrassi Junior High books are probably something that's going to be a Patreon exclusive going forward if we keep doing them because those the people who are definitely coming and already a part of the community, they're already doing so much through their Patreon subscriptions that it helps promote those kind of book clubs. So that's kind of the discrepancy of why the Linda one and the Steven one are open to everyone because I did just kind of an alternative fundraiser for the bookmarks and stuff. And I don't know if people understand how much shipping costs in Canada. Every time I send something out to get signed, it's like an extra $80 just for me to send it out and get it back. It's absolutely insane. No, I did not realize that. That's why. But you know, you would know that you do work for the post office. I work for the post office. And what I typically do is I'll send a package by tracked mail because I mean, oh my God, these are autographs that we're getting from the cast. And that's about $40 one way and usually about $40 back. So that's why normally when I do these types of things, there's a little bit more of a focus on pushing Patreon subscribers or always end up going to help me get these cool things because I want us to have cool bookmarks signed by Stephen Stone. I mean, if we have the opportunity to do it, let's do it. But I need a little bit of financial help. I signed up to get one of those bookmarks, my first ever mail out here because I'm like, yeah, my birthday. Heck yeah. I'm going to. Yeah, I've read this book like six times. Yes, exactly. So I'm very, very excited for you to get it. I think you'll love the bookmark. And the fact that it's signed by Stephen and Christopher, I think that's huge. You get two two signatures in one little pack. That's pretty cool. I mean, yeah, it's huge. It might just end up on my Degrassi magnet wall. Oh, I love that. I'm excited to see what you do with it. And another question. I know you said in the very first Mother of All Degrassi book club, you said you wanted to do Snake's book next. Do you have an idea of what you want to do next after Stephen Stone? Or are you not thinking that far ahead? I'm not thinking that far ahead yet in terms of actually planning something. But if I had to choose, the next book that I would probably do is Spike's book because that's probably my second favorite book. And it's the one that I know the most lore about. So if you've listened to my own podcast recently about the history of Degrassi books, that's the one that we really dive into. So I think, I know it probably makes most sense to go in publishing order or order of what follows the show, but I like to do the order of how I want to do it and what I like best. So I would say if we did another one, it would probably be the Spike book. I mean, that definitely makes sense i listened to the first 40 minutes so far it just came out today i couldn't finish yet because i had to hop on here with you i love it man that was a hard choice do i hop on with them or do i listen to their episode (laughs) i love it i love that it's a jocelyn day for you i'm here for this oh almost every day is a jocelyn day for me i (laughs) re-listen to your episodes all the time i love it i feel so supported thank you sia yes I mean, I'm definitely going in chronological order as much as I can. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I get a little bit confused of what was published first because Goodreads is different, but that's what I'm trying. I love it. I think that's so cool. Spike would be next for you. It is a really good one. That was one of the first character books I read and it's so good. I got the reprints of it. I love that. It's also easier when you're like really invested in the material. It's a lot easier to do all of these extra projects like hosting a book club and stuff. So that's definitely why I would do uh, Spike. Yeah, it would be interesting to see what's different with the with the reprint. What's that? What's that big key difference there? Yeah, I know you've got both the reprint and the original, right? Mm hmm. I wasn't able to find an archive.org copy of the English original, but I do have a French one in the link tree (laughs) on our Discord. I love that. Our French Degrassi fans are going to be so happy to hear that. (laughs) Yes, our little French pineapples. (laughs) So that's interesting to hear. At first, in Mother of All Degrassi, you knew what you wanted to do next, but now you don't. You're not thinking ahead. That's interesting because you did send me a copy of the snake book in advance, and I didn't know you were going to do that. I messaged you, and I was like, oh my gosh, I found BLT's book for like $5 on thrift books. Mm-hmm. And like, I had a free book credit. So I was like, yeah, now it's free. I love and that. I'm like, don't buy snakes, eyeball emoji. And I'm like, what? What's going to happen? Yes, of course I had to send it to you. Well, especially because we have this amazing Degrassi Kid Network connection. So you're giving me a whole podcast to post for my Patreon subscribers. It is totally fun for me to help send you some books and help grow your collection. So that was no problem at all. Yeah, I already had it in French by complete accident. And I'm like, (laughs) I don't know anything about French. Yeah, we're not doing a French book club. No way. (laughs) I mean, I'd be down for it. I'd love to try to learn with your the French pineapple. Je suis une anana. Yes, the pineapple. So that show was terrifying. It was a French show that taught kids how to speak French and it was scary. It was like an anamorphic pineapple. It was crazy. Anyway, I've gotten us so far off of Degrassi. (laughs) 
<laughs> I mean, I absolutely love it. I know Retro Kids got their collection, and um, I've got the Degrassi Kid collection that they've got. <laughs> I would love if they had a Degrassi Kid collection. <laughs> that would My be great. God. <laughs> I don't know, speak it into fruition they're announcing a new collection on my birthday on monday <gasps> i just saw it on their instagram that is so so exciting yeah so yeah i i want to watch this french pineapple sometime we'll have a watch party right i know i'll drop my i don't know anything about retro kids collection but this is what i have observed they had said that they were going to announce another degrassi collaboration so it seemed like they were going to be releasing new stuff then they said on their instagram story they said oh hey it got pushed back but it hasn't come out yet and when you look on their website there's all their degrassi stuff is completely sold out and half of it's taken off the website so i'm kind of curious if something maybe happened with their partnership that maybe it's it's been two years now maybe it's uh expired or timed out that's my that's my theory anyway but i don't know i haven't talked to them about it I haven't checked their website since I bought this shirt and um a couple of pins during my first purchase. The yeah. little button pin pin back buttons. I don't know what they're called. Yeah. Because <laughs> when I say pin, I think of like a writing utensil. But mm. oh my gosh. It's I so know. cool. It's so soft. I love the Degrassi stuff. I I they ended up sending me the entire collection for free, which was fucking crazy. I don't know if I can say fucking on here, but it was freaking you crazy. Say whatever you want. Okay, perfect. <laughs> you were fucking Tessa Gibbon. Oh, that's what I think every time I curse. Um, I said that yesterday with Tom. I was like, oh my gosh. I was talking about something <laughs> out. He, he, he was like, oh my gosh, didn't Mr. Perino have an affair with Hot Talacos? And I'm like, no, you're thinking of Snake, which is wild because in School's Out, he's so mad at Joey for having an affair with Tessa Gibbon. Yeah. He's a little hypocrite. You were fucking Miss Hot Sauce? yes <laughs> apparently he got confused because that happened on riverdale and i'm like yes. riverdale yet like i can't find it my mom and i were talking about it afterwards and she's like yeah every time you search riverdale you find riverdale you know the other riverdale i know i'll have to add it to our pilots list yeah because stephen stone mentions it in his book so i'm like yeah we gotta yeah. find it we gotta watch it i believe in us whatever it takes we can find it i mean yeah we gotta find the way back machine riverdale website too because he mentions that and how yeah. he makes mini thoughts. I'm yes. spoiling so much. <laughs> no, but it's so fun. It's so fun. It's so cool. Yeah. So that makes me wonder, when talking to Linda, did you notice any Degrassi storylines that happened to like the classic cast in real life and then were turned into episodes for other shows for like TNG or something? Good question. I think one of the things that Linda and I talked about, I can't say it was really necessarily turned into an episode. But we were talking about, um, in her book, she references how when she had an interracial couple on Degrassi, BLT and Michelle, that she got pushback from it. And she had told me a little bit more about the types of letters that she was getting. That it wasn't just that that one sole person who sent her a letter, that she was frequently getting letters from like church groups and stuff that said her show should be taken off the air and they were praying for her and that kind of stuff. But that was all around that episode that we knew that happened. But it was interesting just how much it was interesting to hear Linda's kind of candid response of just like, oh, like those people are crazy. Like we're just going to reflect that in the show to show their point of view and show how they're wrong. Um, but it was interesting how it didn't phase her at all. Uh, like she didn't take it personally and she didn't think like, oh, I have to respond to any of these people. She was like, no, like they're they're nuts. Um, so I have a very vivid memory of driving around Toronto and her telling those kind of stories. But I can't say I remember us talking about anything that later was confirmed to be in in uh the show we did talk a little bit about like some behind the scenes facts that she was like the voice of lucy's mom which was so oh, cool so yeah. oh did something happen wait you can't hear her oh i heard her now <laughs> i did at first barking up a storm oh my gosh <gasps> she's the reason there's a storm she's barking um but yeah I, I can't say that there was much that linda talked about that isn't already like very known like uh, pat stealing a car was in the show and that kind of stuff i'll be right back i'm gonna see what she's barking at oh, um, no problem a thunder. It was a thunder. A thunder? What's that mean? Thunder. Oh, th thunder. Yeah. So sorry. I'll have to edit that out somehow. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. No problem at all. <laughs> I love it. But um, no, you did talk about the um, Pat stole a car in one of your podcast episodes. I think it was right after your abortion episode in your first season. Yeah. Oh my God. Look at you knowing your Degrassi good facts. I love it. And I noticed one when we were doing the book club, which um. I re-listened to every episode that I could squeeze in after doing all of my Tom research. Crazy. When And when you were doing your first interview, it was just you and Linda. Mm. And she talked about how Amanda Stepto, 
she got all those presents because everyone thought she was actually pregnant. Yeah. And then when Jenna Middleton is on Next Teen Star, she gets all those presents and fan letters. And I'm like, so I'm always curious, like, was that inspired? I think that makes total sense that that would be inspired by that. And one thing that was very cool, as you know, I went to the Toronto archives and I got to read through a box of fan mail from the 80s. And I've always heard them talk about it in the interviews of how like people really addressed them as their characters and invited them to their birthdays parties and stuff. And I got to see those real letters from teenagers and a big resounding thing was asking Spike about her hair and asking about her baby and does she need anything? And, you know, like my aunt just had a baby or my cousin just had a baby. And it was really interesting to see the way I mean you're you're marketing to young kids it makes sense that they can't disconnect reality from a show but it was really interesting to see them write to Lucy and write to Heather and Erica and, and that kind of stuff is very cool oh my gosh I would have loved to read some of those letters Heather and Erica are so cool and I'm like I'm always so sad we don't get to see them move on to TNG like we do with a little bit of Lucy and you know Spike and Caitlin yeah There was one letter that um, really stood out to me and really stuck with me. And there was a lot of subtext in it. And it was, there was this big package. And so this is kind of like a trigger warning topic for uh, the things that Lucy goes through in her episode. Oh, and good, and good news at noise suppressed. And I didn't hear that. I saw it. (laughs) So sorry. She made me jump. I don't know what it, she she gets like this when it's raining. I'm so sorry. She just wants to be a guest on your podcast. (laughs) The Daisy podcast. I was so worried this was going to happen with Tom yesterday. I'm so happy she she slept through the whole thing. But yeah, she's just she's popping in. Daisy. She has an opinion. Um, it was really interesting because there was a kid who had written to Lucy and it was in this package of all these like letters like there was a, a teacher in Nunavut who was teaching his or no sorry at the time it was uh, Northwest Territories who was teaching his kids about Degrassi and they were watching the show and one of their assignments was to write letters to the Degrassi kids and she had written it to Lucy and the in the letter she was saying how she loved Lucy the most because she rem- Lucy reminds her of herself and uh, she really liked the episode where that teacher came to school and did that to Lucy because it showed her that someone could stand up for her like we did and it talked about how much she related to lucy and she never outright said like i'm being assaulted by someone but it was very very clear that that's what she was uh talking about and it broke my heart because here i was in a situation where i was reading a letter from a kid but a kid who's now like a 50 year old adult if they're if they're still alive um a kid who's now an adult and there's just like nothing you can do so like i i got a glimpse at what it must have been like to be around during that time when you're talking about those tough issues and getting these letters that are so full of subtext of i relate to this character the most i relate to wheels when that guy picked him up or those kind of things it was it was very uh interesting to get that perspective but that letter still sticks with me and absolutely breaks my heart every time that i think about it i can absolutely see why and Mm -hmm. i remember when we did our interview with linda she said she related to lucy so much Mm -hmm. and I was like wow because I relate to multiple parts of a lot of different characters like Claire and Adam and like there's not just one character that's like oh yeah that's Sierra but you have like oh yeah Fiona is Jocelyn yeah oh I love that my favorite and I was talking to Tom yesterday and he was telling me who he relates to I don't want to spoil it too much for you but all I get is shocked the heck out of me I was like wow (gasps) I'm excited to hear it. I'm excited to see it. I'm curious. Yeah. You got me hooked. I just, I love that. And like, I remember we were talking about Linda and her car accident and how maybe that inspired Lucy's car accident and a lot of other car accidents on the show because there's quite a few. Yes. A- and one of my favorites is um because she- she talks about when she went uh, drag racing or speed racing. And we see that with Peter and Sean. And I remember talking to her about that and being like, I had no idea that was a Linda Schuyler exclusive story. And she laughed about that. That was fun. It is a lot of fun, especially because that's something a lot of the fans will be like, man, that was too fast, too furious. It just didn't feel Degrassi sometimes. And I'm like, too Linda, too Skylar, in my opinion. Exactly. <laughs> it can be a bit hard to get into, especially if, like car racing is not my deal. I'm so scared of driving, you know? Yeah, I understand that. There's definitely some things on Degrassi that I'm like, oh, my God, I don't know why they talked about this. But then there's someone who watches that episode and is like, oh, my God, it feels so seen. So, so it really is a show for, for everybody. But sometimes it's a show not for me. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. My mom's always saying that, too. She's like, this is just not a show for me. And I'm like, no, no, it's not. <laughs> At your age, no, it's not. I love that. Even the Degrassi Junior High episodes, sometimes she's just, just like, man, my high school experience wasn't like this. And I was in high school in the 80s. And I'm like, oh, 
<laughs> I love it. I love it. I love that you watch Degrassi with your mom. It's one of my favorite things to do in the whole world. <laughs> love that. So when you first heard about Bruce Mackey, the mm-hmm. inspiration for my podcast, the dedication to Linda's book, how did you feel about that story? And where did you hear about it? Good question. So I really think I started to just kind of piece together who Bruce was through Linda's interviews. Because anytime that she talked about Marco, she had always talked about a friend that she had who was a closeted gay man. So Linda has always kind of been talking about Bruce, but just not explicitly saying his name is Bruce Mackey. He was a librarian and this kind of thing. So it was when I started to really look at Degrassi as something that I wanted to learn more about. I love watching Degrassi and then going on IMDb and reading the facts or going on the wiki and learning things. And so I can't quite remember the first time that I learned about who Bruce Mackey was specifically, but it was kind of just like a long period of time of building more and more knowledge about him as a person. Person. Um, and I remember a big thing that stood out to me was I think it was called Degrassi It Goes There. It was the season 14 special they did. And she really blatantly talks a little more clearly about her gay friend who went out to the bars and was a teacher by day. And that was a really big building block for me and piecing together who Bruce was as a person. But a, a big other thing was going through older interviews with Linda when she talked to, and during the kids at Degrassi Street because she had used people's names by that point. So I, I had learned about different people behind the scenes. I had learned about Bruce. That's when I learned about the park. That's when I learned I read the plaques. I learned that they were made by Arlene Lott, who played Nancy and Rachel and Degrassi. And it was just kind of this like building blocks of learning and learning more about Bruce until finally, I mean, Linda's book comes out and then we get these compelling stories about who he is as a complete person so yeah long story short a long long time of researching about Degrassi and slowly picking up puzzle pieces that formed into Bruce Mackey yeah because I first heard about him through your episode the queer history of Degrassi and I'm like huh I never heard of him before I wonder how Jocelyn found out about him and then I get the book and I'm like oh there's even more but somehow your episode came out before the book so I'm like so I know. I, I remember when they asked me to work on their book and then I read it and I was like, okay, let me tell you guys right now. I just did like a complete history breakdown. I want you to know that this happened before the book. So it was almost kind of validating to me because I had gotten so much of it right. I was like, oh my God, good for me. But then I was worried that they might think that I had like leaked the book or something because I had gotten it. I had gotten the book in advance before I went on the trip, but not before I started making the podcast. So I I mean, I messaged them right away and I was like, just so you know, and they're like, Justin, we trust you. You know, you wouldn't like leak the book or anything like that uh but yeah it was just a lot I love researching Degrassi and at that point I was so in full swing of the podcast I was learning so much that I had learned all these things about who Bruce Mackey was as a person and then how great to then immediately get the book and learn even more about his story I think that's completely wild because when I was asking Tom he's like I never heard of Bruce Mackey before and I'm just like you're from the show you're from junior high era you never heard of him and like you live in Canada you you probably went to the park like how do you yeah. not know I know. And we even went to the park with Tom, um, but I don't know if he knew about the story then. We did tell him a little bit about who Bruce was when we were standing outside of his house. But that's the thing. When you start to focus on something, it becomes really clear to you and you remember all these things. And I have to remember that when I interviewed Degrassi actors myself is like, I have researched the show top to bottom. I know everything. They probably don't remember as much as I do. But a big key thing that I found is uh, I, I'm a journalism student, so I know how to find certain things like planning documents or or contacting the city and stuff like that. And uh, in the early 2000s, a few years after Bruce had died, uh, uh, oh my gosh, her last name is Sinclair. Nancy Sinclair. Nancy Sinclair worked at the Playing With Time Foundation with Degrassi. And she had reached out to the uh, city of Toronto and said that they wanted to take that park that's at Degrassi and rename it to Bruce Mackey Park. And she listed a bunch of things that he did with his students and taking them on trips and why he deserved to have this park named after him. And that document from the city of Toronto was a huge help in helping me shape that original episode of figuring out who Bruce was and what he was like and why he had these deep connections to Degrassi Street and helping Linda build the show. So honestly, it's just like looking at every corner that you can with for the word Degrassi and finding these kind of stories and then you can kind of help build a narrative around it and make a podcast like the history of the queer history of Degrassi about Bruce Mackey yes I found that planning document when I was doing my episode yeah Bruce Mackey and I found it and I'm like I'm saving this pdf I'm putting it in my sources in the episode anyone can find it on Spotify now but it will download straight to your device when you click on it it is a pdf 
isn't that amazing so like that that's such an, an important document for whenever you're building things like a podcast I mean how I'm sure when you read it you were like holy shit there's all this valuable information here and really it's just like a city planning document it doesn't seem like it's anything special it's just like a hey we want to rename this park here's why we want to do it can you sign off on it yeah sure so it, it's interesting if you just look everywhere you will find a, a golden nugget make it into your podcast yeah it's really cool I found like a picture of one of the plaques that Arlene Lott made um the picture is the picture of the plot of the plaque with his house on it yeah um on Instagram Undergrass is CSI's Instagram and yeah. I found another one with a picture of him that you took on your Instagram yeah to find it where you could read the plaque and yeah. everything and that's huge. I mean, that's a real thing that's in the middle of Toronto, right on Degrassi Street. It's such it's amazing how much uh, information is out there. If you can just know where to look for it, then you can find some amazing things. And that's those are all the same resources that I used to build together a picture of who Bruce Mackey was. And then I read the book uh, that Linda wrote about him, which was incredible. Yeah. And somehow people on Degrassi don't even know. Yeah. And that's wild because you met him after he had already listened to my podcast and he messaged you and reached out to you and he even had a question for you too. (gasps) Oh, I love that. I want to hear this question from Tom. He wants to know, do you remember the drink and snack that he ordered and had with you and Evie? Okay, Evie would remember because I remember Evie had said um, that what he ordered looked really good. She had just said this to me like yesterday. She said, oh yeah, what he ordered looked really good. He ordered a matcha drink. Oh, and... don't ask me. He didn't tell me the answer. Oh, he didn't tell you the answer. Oh, well, gosh. No. I think he ordered, he ordered like a green matcha drink. I don't remember him getting a snack though. That's, that's news to me. I feel like also keep in mind, I am so excited because a Degrassi actor has just asked if I wanted to hang out with them. I feel like. I know, mind blowing. I know. I feel like I was head in the clouds. I think he definitely got some kind of green matcha drink and I would have voted that he got no snack. So <laughs> not sure on that one. That's not what I would have guessed for him. He was drinking a Tim Hortons coffee the entire time in our interview. And I'm like, drinks coffee so much in the show. I would think he would just get like a plain hot coffee with maybe some cream. Oh, yeah. No, he was fancy. He was a fancy guy. And we hung out at, um, we were at a coffee shop that was literally at the very end of Degrassi Street. Like when we walked out of the coffee shop, it took us maybe like 15 steps to get to Degrassi Street. And it was called Jimmy's Coffee, which of course I love this. I remember that from your video on Instagram. Yeah, it was so funny. And he was so down to just like record little skits with us and do little things. Like there's so many videos that we have with them. It was so fun. Yeah, he was saying it was like, they're so much fun. They're so energetic. It was just a blast. They're so sweet. And I'm like, oh my gosh. It was incredible. Me and Evie were like, I remember it was Thursday and we were like, oh my gosh, we're so tired. We might just like stay in the hotel room all day and just kind of like lay around. And then we got a FaceTime call from Tom and he was like, I'm on Degrassi Street. Do you want to get a coffee? And we were there literally within 10 minutes. Like it was crazy. I mean, yeah. When someone from your favorite show asks you to do anything, you're like, yeah, how quick? Yeah. And even Pat Bevan had reached out to us and was like, oh my God, I'm not in Toronto right now. But if I was, I want to hang out with you guys. And I was like, that's so sweet. And then she made us, did you see the zines that she made? This isn't good for an audio podcast. Yesterday. She made these zines about me and Evie. It was absolutely crazy wait she sent you more than one she did she sent me photocopies oh my god i know she kept them for herself too i know i thought that was so 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 sweet it was funny the timing of it because i had just messaged evie and i was like are you too busy to call right now like before i'd even open got my mail and she was like yeah i'm really busy i'm editing your podcast i just like need to finish this and i was like okay and then like four minutes later i facetimed her and she was like what's going on i just told you i'm busy and i was like there's an emergency do you want to know what pat bevan just sent me in the mail and then i showed her and we just like freaked out someone from degrassi made a zine about us like that's so cool that's so yeah cool. okay so tom and i were talking about ev2 and i'm like yeah i really want you to be on her podcast i want you to be on her episode where where you're on it um, on nothing to fear yeah and he's like, yeah, I reached out to her. I want to be on her podcast, but she hasn't gotten back to me. I wonder what's up. And I'm like, I'll message her. And then I message her and she's like, oh yeah, I'm just so busy. And then oh I my see God. That she updated her thing and she's like editing Degrassi Kid podcast. And then like a few hours after that, she's recording with new your new look, new podcast. The next she's class episode, part a two. A booked and busy girl. She's also very, very kind. We filmed a bunch of TikToks together yeah. and she is so good at editing. So she's auditing those too. So she is a booked and busy girl. But I'm excited. I hope that that uh, partnership works out. I think it will. I think it'll work out. Oh my gosh. I'm sure we'll do a great episode together because he is just the nicest guy. He gave me like two hours of his time. I got to meet his wife at the end because his wife came and I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. I took so much of your time. He's like, oh my gosh, no, no problem. I love that. It's so fun. I have like a two hour video to edit now that I don't know how I'm going to do it. I've never edited a video before. I believe in you. It'll be good. Okay. So, you know, 
and we all know if we read Linda's book that she forgot to mention Degrassi Talks Mm -hmm. and she didn't talk about the Degrassi franchise books at all either broke my heart Mm -hmm. so what do you wish she would have said I think it would have been really interesting to hear her talk about both the Degrassi books and the Degrassi Talks episodes I can kind of understand it where at that point, those are kind of projects that she's not really spearheading. Like she's really, you know, producing the show and going through all these roadblocks. And I know that Degrassi Talks was really a project that the kids worked on and they had some supervisors and the books were really handled with the publisher and the writers. So I can understand why they didn't make it into the book. But I, I really would have liked to see her talk about um, the decisions of how, like even how Degrassi Talks came up. Was that something that she was a part of that decision making? Um, what were her thoughts about it? Um, I, I'm also curious because then later we have YouTube and now we have the actors going to talk to people in real life or maybe even kids are sending in videos to share their thoughts. I would like to have more of an idea of how did that connect. But I also know that when it comes to um, the internet and stuff, Stephen is really the main person to talk to about that. And he really wasn't involved that much in Degrassi Talks. So it, there's a lot of like little strings out there that I wish could be wrapped up. But I know that was such a huge history. You know, we can't hear everything, but I totally wish Degrassi Talks is something that I wish we heard um, more about about especially one thing i'll other say about degrassi talks is because there are so many indigenous like i think one third of the people that they interview are indigenous and they really amplify how uh the stories that they cover on degrassi happen in indigenous indigenous communities at a much higher rate and at much younger ages and they still didn't do anything with that information to put indigenous students in their show so i i really would be curious to know why that was something that was kind of overlooked in my opinion yeah you even shared that in your very first episode of your podcast When you talk about the reboot, like, man, in the reboot, I want to see more Indigenous characters. And then, sadly, we all know what happened. I cry every time I listen to the episode. Their reboot just didn't happen on HBO Max or HBO Max, as you say. HBO Max. I feel kind of okay. I think it's clear that HBO Max wasn't that bought into the project. And I think it would have been it would have been a moment where we maybe got 10 brand new episodes that weren't the best and weren't the most cared for and then they probably would have canceled it so i am honestly okay that the reboot didn't come back it brought the degrassi fucking community back to life so that was great i mean my i i was someone who my socials had never ended whenever the show ended i kept going posting about degrassi and then all of a sudden there was this resurgence people were coming back online people were following me so i felt great (laughs) i'm okay that it didn't come back I mean, yeah, your very first episode being about the reboot is why I chose to listen to your podcast over another rewatch. I'm like, yeah, I got to know what's going on with this reboot. And a Canadian, a Canadian has to know. Yes, the Canadian knew. And thanks. Thanks to Annie Clark for pointing that out. It was perfect timing. The reboot was announced in January. And I think my first episode came out on April 16th. So at that point in time, uh, there was, you know, a bit of time had passed with no information, but it wasn't the full like freaking two years that it's been now of just like knowing that it was announced and then it was canceled it was crazy i mean you even got to talk to a writer someone who wrote a few episodes of the reboot was on your podcast james alexander that was incredible i couldn't believe that i landed that interview i was like are you sure you want to tell me about it and he had told me that he like reached out to the people he was working on the show with and got confirmed confirmation of what he could share and couldn't share the fact that uh snake was supposed to be on it eli and claire were supposed to be on it like that was crazy information to get from a from a writer I mean, you know me, my love and hate for Eclair goes back and forth, back and forth. But I think it would have been fun to see them on the reboot. They are iconic. Yes. Oh, I think that any any character they bring back at all, I would be so thrilled to see them. I would be feel so lucky that we got that. And of course, my mom would say, yeah, Snake, Hot Daddy Snake's got to be on there. (laughs) (laughs) It would be crazy if Stefan Brogan wasn't a part of the reboot in some way, even if he was just I, I think he should be like a board director on the Board of Education or something like even if he just pops in every like once a once a year or something, I would be very happy with that. I mean, my mom's going to want to see him in every single episode, but I'd be okay with a little less snake because it's got to be tired. Yeah. It's a restaurant. Like, come on. I know. It'd be cool to see him. So who would you like to hear with a book that would mention Degrassi Talks or the Degrassi books? I think if... I think the person we need to get a memoir from, I mean, obviously Kit Hood. Kit Hood, unfortunately, can't write a memoir at this point. But Yan Moore, we need a memoir from Yan Moore. Like, he has, he is kind of that gap of, like, he was there from uh, Lisa Makes the Headlines. Or, from, sorry, from Casey Draws the Line in coming up with that uh, f- problem solver. He was there in sp- spearheading the next generation. He was there all throughout the Degrassi High Era. I would love to know Yan Moore's perspective on Degrassi and how he's still connected to it. Because every time I've gone to 
a Degrassi event. Yan has been there. He was at the Walk of Fame. He's been at Linda's house. So he's still very connected to the show. He still hangs out with uh, Pat, does his like yearly get togethers and him and Catherine go. I think Catherine and Yan co-writing some kind of uh, memoir would be a really big missing piece for the Degrassi community, which is why I love interviewing Catherine because she knows everything. She was everywhere. (laughs) Yeah. And honestly, it is kind of sad. Linda wrote her memoir before Walk of Fame, before the documentary got started. And those stories just will not be in there. Yeah, I know. It's interesting. It's it's really a same with, I mean, the ending of Steven's book, his book, spoiler alert, ends with them working on season five of Next Class. Does not happen. Never comes to fruition. So it's interesting how it's the endings are always kind of a screenshot in time or a snapshot in time of where Degrassi is at that moment in time. But it'll keep going, which is what we want. Yeah, we never got to see season five, but we know he was writing it Mm -hmm. and writing his memoir at the same time, like a rock star that he is. So crazy. Always so much on the go. It's nuts. Yes. So can you spoil any of the fun events that are part of our book club? at all i think i might have spoiled i I might have spoiled some already um we're going to be doing weekly readings i'm going to be working with you on that of when we want to host those uh we're going to be adding more than just uh talking about the book we're going to be watching some stuff we're going to be listening to some music together and i'm really going to try to have a community focus on it so we can accomplish all these things without just one person doing them and of course the big thing is that we're going to be talking to stephen stone at the very end of it that one is that that's one that's already been announced but i can't wait so cute of him to sign the bookmarks. I thought it was, so, I sent him a marker, but he signed them in pen, which I thought was even more Stephen of him. And he went out of his way. He met up with Christopher Ward and Christopher Ward has also signed the other side of the bookmark. So it's double signed bookmarks. The fact that I've done this once before, it made me a lot more confident in reaching out. So Stephen also had the blueprint of what was happening. And I felt very uh, good about doing such a cool, full package this is what it what it looks like i know we're an audio podcast but i mean that's just amazing i mean spotify has video podcasts so i might be able to upload this video i'm hoping to do that with tom i i screen recorded our video so hopefully i love that i love that video editing i will say tom the one makes sense video editing i would just do audio for this because video editing is a lot then you have to send it to me then i have to upload it it's like insane how much video takes so with this one i would just do audio i'll see what i can do (laughs) i have no (laughs) idea what i'm doing i believe in you but even i even i don't edit my own video podcast because i think it's way too hard i that's why we only started getting them when evie started editing because i refuse to do video podcasts but i wish you the best of luck i do okay so our final question right now Mm -hmm. what would you say to someone who's brand spanking new to discord's never been on it before never been part of any of our book clubs and might just be a little nervous about like downloading the app, meeting all the new people. What do you say to them? It's a really good question. I like that because that's one of the things I'm always trying to convince people. It's not scary because I used to be scared of Discord. My biggest advice would be that if you download the app and you join, you don't have to say anything. You can just browse through all the channels that we have. You can see what everybody else is saying. And then you can feel if it's like the right space for you to talk and chime in. We're always asking questions. We have different things going on with clubs. You can just download the app and give it a shot. And I think every person who has done that has found a space in the community for them. Some people only do do our chat events. Some people just pop in every once in a while to share a photo. Some people come every single time we host a live event in our chats together. Uh, You will find the space that's best for you and we are so excited to have you in whichever way you show up yeah I don't think I could have said it better myself I remember how nervous I was and now I'm a club leader yeah now you got a podcast now you're interviewing people it's crazy it's crazy how much it's grown just from this discord yeah I I remember I was so nervous and my anxiety is always at a peak high but everyone is so loving and accepting and so quick to answer a question if you're like I don't know how this works everyone's there especially Yes, I know. Shout out to Nick. Shout out to the Degrassi uh, student council team and the hall monitors. Without them, this wouldn't be possible. There's no way I could run this all by myself. And the fact that we have these little community leaders with the after school clubs. So freaking cool. I love it. I feel very grateful. Yeah, you're never, ever alone. And then is it trivia yes. after this? Yes, I only have six <gasps> trivia questions and I believe you're going to rock them. Oh, I'm excited. Okay. And if you want to hear Degrassi kid play this book trivia, you got to go to their Patreon. Another thing you'll find on Degrassi kid's Patreon is clips from the actors during our book club for the mother of all Degrassi. A bunch of actors got to ask our book club questions, and I forgot to ask Jocelyn during our interview what it was like to get those, and if the actors ever got to hear our answers. So while I was editing, I sent them a Discord message, and they said 
that it was tons of fun to get those questions, but they forgot if they ever sent the answers to the actors. Patreon.com slash Degrassi Kid. Before we hop, can we take a photo for my Instagram story? Heck yeah. Three, two, one, smile. I love it. Okay, do you have any kind of closing that you want to do? Or is, are we just saying goodbye to each other? Well, if, if there's something you want to plug in that you can, you go ahead, throw it in there. Come come to the book club. We're going to be reading through uh, Stephen Stone's Whatever It Takes. It's going to end with a meeting with him at the very end, which is crazy. And there's uh, only a few days left, depending on when you're listening to this, to get the bookmarks. And there's only a few bookmarks left. So now's the time to sign up. Now's the time to get ready. And uh, we'll get into gear and read some Degrassi together. Yeah, and you just changed the prices for your mail out to you on Patreon because they changed the prices of the stamps. I'm so happy I signed up when I did before the I price know. got more expensive. L- Luckily, it doesn't actually take effect for another 30 days. So anyone who gets the oh. package, it'll it'll still be the same. Uh, anyone who's getting it this month, it's still the same price. So that's perfect. Good, good for them. Oh my gosh! So the Pride Month package will be a little bit more expensive then. Yes, you got it exactly. But it's gonna be worth it. Wait until you see what it is. You're gonna be like. This I was going to ask you, can you spoil? Because I'm not sponsoring Pride Month like I did last year. No, this month we are sponsored by a Degrassi actor. <gasps> Whoa! I have okay. no other information for you other than that. Well, you just blew my mind. I don't need to know more now. I want to <laughs> save up and sign up again. Oh my gosh. This, I, I think the one that's coming um, is going to be your favorite of all the packages I've ever done. That's all I have I to say. Mean... Yeah, now I'm guessing. <laughs> I'm like now I'm like, oh my gosh, maybe it's Jordan Tonnesy. I fucking love her. Maybe it's Tom, maybe it's Tom Alyssis. Maybe it's someone else. You never know. <laughs> oh my gosh, if it was Tom Perino, Alyssa. I swear. I love gay people, Mr. Perino. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. He he absolutely loved listening to the Bruce Mackey episode because he was like, I was friends with gay people when I was a kid. I love that. I love Tom. Now he's friends with gay people now. He hung up with me and Amy heck yeah ally to the end <laughs> exactly okay awesome sierra this is amazing i feel so special and i can't wait to listen to your next few episodes it's gonna be amazing yeah i can't wait to try editing this i know best of luck to you okay it was great talking to you see you later you want to say goodbye to listeners goodbye listeners yep we love you i should say i should say goodbye readers see you for the oh. next chapter <laughs> i didn't think of that before oh my gosh yes the next <laughs> chapter the next chapter we'll see what's what's left to be read it's in a book i love it okay i love you so much talk to you later bye love you and we forgot to record instagram plugs so if you want to check out jocelyn aka degrassi kid they are at degrassi kid on instagram and if you want to find me i am sierra lucy 05 on everything except for ebay where we are mimi's attic vintage And we currently have a coupon code for 29% off of all media. It is Sierra29. And that code lasts until May 31st. See you next time.